I think it's useful to have a mental picture of both a class and an object. And I like to think of a class as looking something like this. As something having a name, having attributes and having behaviours. Now for the last video we looked at a form and the form had some buttons on it that changed the colour of a label. Now the name of that particular class was Form 1. The attributes it had, well we could say the label was an example of an attribute, or most precisely the colour of the label was an example of an attribute of that particular class. And it could be changed to red, to green, to blue. The behaviours, well that could have been the code attached to the button, which had an effect in this case on the attribute. So clicking on the red button for example, change the attribute. So I think this is a good diagram of a class. Now the thing is a class does not execute. We have to create an instance of a class, in other words an object. And to do that we use a constructor and we've seen that we have to use the word new in our constructors. Now when this word new appears, what it does, it produces an object. Now I like to view an object as follows. I like to see an object as two circles and in the inner circle we have the attributes and in the outer circle we have the behaviours. So in the centre, which we would mark private, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, we would typically have the attributes that were defined in the class. And the behaviour area, well, they were also defined in the class, but it is when you have the object, when the object comes into existence, is when you can use the behaviours and you can change the attributes. So what we have here is an instance of a class, or we also call it an object of the class. Another view of a class we can take is as follows. We can still have the name of the class as shown here. And where we, in the previous bit of this video, we had attributes, we can often refer to those as class level variables. And in this kind of area, we declare our class level variables. Now what are they? Well, integers, doubles, booleans, typical variables. So within our class, we define variables that are at the class level. Now that means that where we declare them, all of the code within the objects of this class have access to these variables. We'll do more of that a little bit later. Where we talked about behaviours, we also have method declarations. Now you've already seen some examples of method declarations, the events, the click events on the red, green and blue buttons for example. But there are other kind of methods that we'll be looking at in due course. So I think this is another view that you need to have of a class. Now when we wish to use the class, we have to create an instance of it. And to do that we use a constructor, which we've already seen, we use the word new. Now that will then produce an instance of this particular class, which I can view as follows, where we have in the centre variables, and we have in the outer circle methods. And what we don't want, we don't want the variables in the middle to be available to the outside world. And what I mean by that are other objects. We want the methods to be, however. Now, what we can see here is an instance of the class. And we also know that an instance of a class is, in fact, an object. Now, when we talk about the methods and the variables, we've already just mentioned we want the variables to be hidden from the outside world. Now, to achieve that, we use the word private. And private is used when we're declaring the variables in the class. Now when we look at the variables that are in the middle of the object, they're in a sense instances of the class level variables that were declared in the class. In other words, for every object we create of the class, each of those objects has their own copy of the variables that were declared in the class. Of course, the methods themselves, we want those to be exposed and we mark those as public. Because when we use an object, we want the outside world to see all of the methods. So for example, if I was going to calculate gross pay and I had created a class that was capable of producing an object where the object could do that calculation for us, then we would have a method that would be exposed that would take in the rate of pay per hour and the hours worked and that method then would work out the gross pay. 
and it would most probably store the result in the center in the private variables and the outside world wouldn't see those we would have to add another method which would allow access to those variables and we'll talk about that in a later video but essentially what we can see here we have a class and we have an object and we've still had to construct the object from the class the object is called an instance as well but what we can see that we've introduced some other words so we now know that we can talk about a class as having a name they all have a name they have attributes which we can see here are can also be called class level variables and they have behaviors which we also know can be methods but the key is whatever we define in the class we cannot use it we have to create an instance of the class ie an object now just a word of warning here this is the idealized view of object orientation it is possible that you can use a class directly but not advise when you're devising your own objects Always create your own class, define your own class, declare your own variables, declare your own methods, and make that an important aspect on the step to producing an object of that particular class.